Welcome back. So middle of the week here you can see that Jeff has got the uh, first of the wing fences bonded on there to the lower surface and this is the uh, right hand wing. So it's looking pretty nice there. The other one still to go. And uh, I actually had to change up how I did things on these gear doors because after I had that uh, first setup there wasn't enough room for my uh, connecting rod to go between um, the there right there because um, the brakes were there and all that sort of stuff so anyway had to basically remove all that and then uh, change it up and you'll see that in a minute and uh, Devin and Jeff have been getting the doors they're a bit further along with they're uh, ready for their last round of primer and uh, got a radius drag there around where the uh, strake extensions are bonded on and a little bit more work around where the door handle is and uh, under here so this is what I was looking at doing now, moving over the, moving the uh, little um, hinge arm there over to the side and just sort of, you know, putting it all together instead of having this one rod there. I've just got like a little um, couple of rod ends together. Uh, but I, anyway, I ended up uh, moving it to the back side of the wheel because there's more room there. Uh, there's a little bit less in the front there. And you'll see ag again a little bit uh, shortly how I did that. And so here the doors moving along a little further, getting close to being ready to be able to spray them. So and then once they get their primer, that's uh, them done. And uh, so here's that uh, wing there, and uh, getting some actual high sole put in some of the gaps there, in between like there where the rib is ended, and there's a few different places there where you know water could intrude or whatever. So um, Jeff and Devin just sort of mixing up some high sole just to fill those gaps. So if you're following closely, you'll notice that I've actually uh, created all new brackets here. The little swing arm there is now got an L shape instead of being straight and the supporting bracket is um, actually a little bit shorter than the other one. And even the little bracket that uh, goes on the actual lower part of the door is a different shape. Uh, but overall, um, this setup works nicely in that uh, you get the full motion of the door and um, you know it's I don't have to have that big long connecting rod and it'll still be the same type of thing where it hits up against a hard point inside of the wheel well and that'll actuate it and then I'm just going to use a torsion spring um, on the actual linkage itself and I just I bought these couple of different springs um, you know, yesterday morning to try out um, and see actually it was this morning to try out and see what would work and I managed to get it to work okay but the springs that I had weren't that great and after bending them a little bit to shape them they ended up uh, breaking so I'm gonna buy some proper torsion springs from McMaster over the weekend but that's how that linkage works and it works really nicely um, so you'll see more of that coming next week where I get that finalized and here Jeff's doing the last little bit of fill work and uh, sanding work there on the lower surface of that wing. And the doors, um, so this is the uh, end of the day, well, close to the end of the day on Friday. I've kind of changed the order of the video here, but close to the end of the day on Friday and you see the doors have been sprayed. And actually I kind of did a pretty bad job of filming this last couple of days just because my mind's been all over the place with everything I'm trying to get all done. Um, as quickly as possible so um, I apologize for not getting everything that I've done one of the things I did do was um, I adjusted the prop and put one full turn of on the uh, locking nut on the back there which added about three degrees of um, well, sort of two and a half degrees of extra pitch on the blades um, in other words sort of you know putting it into a, a bit of a taller gear um, just to see if I can get more well I know I'm going to get more boost out of the engine but I wanted to have a some more power coming out of the engine um, because we don't have the constant speed prop working uh, just yet and Mark and I have been working on that design and uh, it's looking really good I think we're just going to probably just pull the trigger and and get it all sorted out and get it all machined once he's finished off um, you know doing the details in the CAD so anyway, uh, decided to give the uh, engine another run now with the adjusted prop. I also uh, 
finally figured out exactly what was going on with the the radio noise and it wasn't just the uh, hot the hot spot and it wasn't just the power supply that I was using but it was the combination of the two so when the, you put the two together you got the interference so what I did is I just to try things out I bought an inverter a 12 to 110 volt inverter and I hooked that up to the power system and then plugged the actual wall unit in that powers the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and the noise is all gone all the interference is gone now it's a real kludge because you know I'm taking 12 volts so I'm converting it to 110 and then I'm putting an adapter in taking the 110 and converting it back to 5 which is a real mess um, so I've actually ordered another uh, just straight up 12 to 5 volt power adapter in, uh, hope, and it's a 5 amp unit um, so hopefully that one is going to work for me um, but either way I've got a solution right now that means I can run that hotspot without any problems and uh, and would you know hopefully this other new converter will work uh, anyway so the purpose of this taxi test here was to just uh, take it across the other side of the runway again and um, try running it up this time to 3300 rpm which is kind of where I wanted to be last time but I decided to go with 32 and uh, just run it for a couple of minutes and see what the EGTs do and and uh, see how much boost it's um, it's required uh, to turn the prop at that RPM with the new uh, pitch setting on the prop and also I wanted to check uh, one thing I did and I, again I didn't film much this week um, I removed the uh, heat exchanger that I had there the one that was basically taking the uh, the heating loop from the engine that goes to uh, the heater in the cabin um, it was taking that and sort of transferring the heat into the fuel in the tank so I've actually taken that out because I don't think we need that just adding a lot of weight and uh, all the more coolant and fuel and all that sort of stuff tied up in that whole little heat exchanger and I've still kept the other uh, intercooler one that's running the fuel through it uh, with a separate pump switch and one purpose of this particular test was to run that pump and see uh, what sort of difference I got in terms of temperature drop um, for the intake air going across that uh, that intercooler so um, and you'll see that coming up so anyway a couple of tests here testing the prop and uh, testing the uh, new intercooler and also just a, a good you know out on the field test to see if the um, radio interference is gone which it was and the other thing I had a problem with last time was um, coolant uh, overflowing through the reservoir and I looked at um, the possibility of putting a larger coolant reservoir in there and the one that I had in my own car was a little bit larger but only six ounces which really wasn't going to make a big difference and I kind of had the feeling that taking out that other heat exchanger may make a big difference because it was removing you know a lot of coolant from the whole system and you know the total volume is what's causing the total expansion where it's too much and it runs out the reservoir but I still have a feeling that after you know taking out the heat exchanger and even from before that there's still air in the system because uh, after I did this run up that you'll see here shortly uh, I ended up having a bunch of coolant um, overflow again again it got hot it was up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit on the engine so enough um, you know it's sort of like sitting in traffic hot on a hot day and your uh, engine not really cooling very well because you know you're not getting any air uh, running across that fan so much or sorry across the um, radiator so much apart from what the fans pulling so it's not you know realistic but I still think there's air in the system so what I'm going to do next week is just uh, run it up warm it just warm it up nicely and then uh, keep sort of burping the system and uh, keep filling it up with coolant to get all the air out of it and then hopefully it won't have this problem because uh, it never had this problem when it was running on the test stand I think it's because I bled the system really well and so what I'm doing here is just waiting for the engine just to finally warm up to kind of where I'm comfortable uh, doing the run-up and I was also looking just at the time in the bottom corner there of the surface go I wanted to start my run-up right as it clicked over the next minute so I could kind of gauge uh, just a three minute run I didn't want to sort of run it any longer than that um, you know because it just gets too hot without having too much uh, air you know running over the radiator so um, yeah and uh, the other thing I'm do, do, um, doing right here you'll see 
I'm just turning on the uh, boost pump there right there that's the one that um, pushes the fuel through the uh, water to air intercooler and so you've got the the intake air coming out of the second turbo going through the first air to air intercooler and then it goes from there uh, to the water to air intercooler which has the fuel from the header tank running through it and that actually did a pretty good job um, of cooling down the uh, the intake air going into the engine even further and you'll see that here in the logs uh, shortly so um, yeah and the other thing I wanted to make sure that I'm not doing here is not running the uh, EGTs up too high I'm kind of happy with about maximum of 1400 degrees um, so in this run I ended up with about 1350 uh, but I also had the you know the engine temps coming up to 250 the oil temp and the coolant temp was around about there as well and as I said I don't think there was enough coolant in the system or air in the system as well so uh, you know that's why some was leaking out uh, the overflow anyway I'll let you listen to this uh, run up just at uh, full volume and then uh, we'll go over the, the run from there So it sounded to me that the extra pitch on the prop actually changed the note a little bit, which would be understandable. Uh, anyway, here's the uh, the log there of the whole taxi test, and here's zooming in. This is just the run there that I did. Then you can see sort of ramping up there, and uh, you know, kind of the maximum there was it, you know, around about uh, was it 39 pounds or 39 inches? Um, sorry, 39 psi on the boost, and about uh, 3300 on the RPM, about 10 gallons uh, an hour on the fuel burn there, which is equivalent to maybe 200 horsepower or something like that. 
and the EGTs that sort of stabilize there, uh, 1350 coming out of the um, out of the cylinders there. And that, you know, oil and uh, coolant temps were still going up and understandably because they're just not getting enough cooling air there. But what's really cool here is the, um, the difference that you see, the difference drop um, going across that uh, second intercooler. It's sort of averaging between sort of 50 to 60 degree drop as well. So the first one's doing the same type of thing, um, you know, 60 degrees or more. And the second one's doing the same, the same again. So I'm actually getting a real, a real benefit there um, having that second intercooler running the the uh, the fuel f uh, through it so overall I'm pretty happy with this and I think right now um, I'm just gonna leave the prop set where it is right now until we get the wings on and actually I can take it down the runway and uh, see you know how it feels in terms of acceleration you know with the extra weight of the wings and uh, if it you know revs out too easily or whatever it just um, you know, get a feel for it. So uh, after all that, uh, taxied it all back, and uh, was sounding a little rough because of the coolant that had gone out of there. But uh, you know, never got over really over about I think 256 or something was the maximum temperature I saw on the oil and the coolant. So not you know pushing it too hard. I get the same temps in my car, just you know stuck in traffic on the freeway on a hot day. Um, you know, being that my car is old and stuff, the cooling system isn't the best on there either. And it's sort of equivalent to this one where you're just not getting a lot of air running across that radiator when you're just uh, idling along there. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with that and um, happy that I've figured out a solution for the, um, the interference there coming across uh, the radio. So that's nice to have that sorted out. And... Um, Let's see, so uh, next week I'll be working on the gear doors some more, just finish those off and also hook up the linkages there for the nose gear. I'm probably going to use some uh, torsion springs on those doors as well just to keep them open and the linkages there to pull them shut. And uh, Jeff and Devin are going to be getting those uh, two wings sprayed and then the next job on those will be to... Um, mount the hardware there for the ailerons and the rudders and I've been uh, chasing up a DAR um, to get our airworthiness certificate and I've been following up with uh, with Len who's uh, you know scheduled to be our test pilot to see when uh, we can have him come out and uh, take an initial look and make sure that you know we've got everything organized uh, for him to go and uh, do the first uh, couple of test flights for us so uh, all in all things are moving along and uh, you know still trying to hit Oshkosh if we can uh, but uh, we'll see if we can make it for that but uh, anyway that's our update for this week thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again on Tuesday and uh, see what we're up to mm -hmm.